Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to take the wooden floor material that we made in the last video and add in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the files that we'll need during this video. We're going to need floor smudges type A medium 001 and gun scratches 003, both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link to them below this video. Okay, let's head over to Cinema 4D. So this is our render from last time. Hopefully we'll uh, be looking a little familiar. <laughs> um, we used the material converter to bring uh, this material in and do the majority of the work for us, but we did make a slight adjustment to the gloss map to make it look a little bit more shiny. Uh, and it's that area that we're gonna be working on today. But before we do that, I just wanna go into a little bit more detail about what it is we're about to do. We're gonna be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, they'll, they'll be the reflections would be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, let's get to work. So I'm gonna double click on the material so we can go into its properties there, and we're gonna go back down to this, remember we put in this V-Ray text layered max in, in place of the gloss map. I'm gonna click on that and I'm actually going to give it a name as well, just so we know what we're doing. We'll just call this gloss. Uh, yeah, just call it gloss. Um, and then I'm going to rename this the gloss map. Gloss map. And then rename this base gloss just so it starts to make a bit more sense in these layers. So we've got our base gloss color, which was completely white, uh, and then our gloss map, which we used a multiply operator on to, to give us more control over our original gloss map. Um, and we'll, we'll now be adding in another layer. So let's hit insert. You'll see a new layer pops up, and then we'll go to V-Ray and advanced bitmap. And then click on that, and now we'll be giving that a name as well. <laughs> keep everything nice and neat and tidy and this will be our floor smudges so let's load in our smudges if I can find them it would be helpful there we go now we've got a few options within our smudges there's there's uh, white on a black background black on a white background um, and a 16-bit one here now for what we're doing the easiest one to use is actually this this black smudges on a white background that's the best one to use with a gloss map which is what we're using with V-Ray so I'm gonna click on that one and hit open and now we have our our map loaded in one thing I do want to do is change this from gamma corrected to linear um, as a general rule if a texture contributes towards the color of a material you want it to use the uh, where is it? The sRGB option. Um, so textures like color, reflection, um, anything that contributes towards the the, the finished color, um, you would set to sRGB. Things like displacement maps, roughness maps, overlays such as this smudges texture, that has nothing to do with the color. We don't want any gamma corrections or anything like that applied to it. So we will select that. We will change that to linear. So that's why we're doing that. And now we'll go back, and we've, we've got our layer again. It didn't. It didn't keep my name. Why? Smudges. Thank you. Right. So now we can clearly see in our layers. We've got our base gloss, the gloss map, and then our smudges on top of that. Now we're going to change that to multiply as well. Now, just to explain why we're using multiply. Um, a multiply operator is a really good way of taking the dark areas from a map and overlaying them on top of another map. It basically um, does a, think of it like multiplying a number. If you multiply something by one, it, may, it, it the, the output's going to be one. If you multiply something by zero, the output will be zero. And it does that to the entire texture. Um, so if I were to say bring this down to nothing, you'll see our original 
um, not our original gloss map, but our, our gloss map after we made some adjustments here. And then as I bring this opacity up, using the multiply operator, you see how the dark areas of that map are creeping in, but without affecting the texture underneath. Yeah, none of the white areas of this map are being brought in, just the dark ones. And that's exactly what we want. Now, I'm going to leave this on its maximum setting at the moment, just for demonstration purposes and to make sure we get the tiling right and whatnot. But uh, that would definitely be too strong. So let's hit render and see what we're getting now. Okay, so yeah, looking pretty hideous, but <laughs> but but it's working. We, we can see the effect that this is happening. Uh, this is having. So let's make some adjustments to make this look a bit more realistic. First of all, we need to adjust the tiling. If you imagine these smudges are kind of like footprints, if you compare that to the size of the the boards of this floor, it might be some pretty tiny feet. Uh, so so let's fix that first of all. We're going to go back into our smudges uh, bitmap and go over to UVW. Oh, I'm just going to shift click so it brings those settings up along with the others and then we have this tiling option I'm going to turn those on and set the tiling to about 0.7 because we want these smudges to be bigger so less of a tile and I think 0.7 should work well for us uh, now the uh, strength is even easier because we've already we've already basically looked at how to do that it's just this opacity slider um, within the the smudges texture which has renamed itself again which is a bit annoying but hey so let's lower that down to about 50 percent and you'll see the difference in the maps quite quite significant now in fact maybe even a little lower than that maybe something like 40. yeah okay so i'll hit render again and we'll see what we get okay so our smudges are looking uh pretty good <laughs> certainly, uh, certainly better than the, uh, the the previous render. Anyway, um, maybe some still some, some slight adjustments still to do, but uh, yeah, I, I think that'll do nicely. Now, we're going to move on to the scratches now. Now, in a lot of other renderers, I would just add the scratches in as a bump map, um, but because of the way V-Ray works, I found it's actually better to sneak the scratches in along with the displacement material. Yeah, it actually works pretty well. So, with that in mind, let's head over to our displacement material. And then you can see the texture that's being used is this displacement texture. Now we're going to do exactly what we did before and bring in a, getting lost now, V-Ray text layered max, yeah? So we're gonna do basically what we did before and just, just start working on our, on our displacement texture. So let's insert a, another layer on top of our displacement texture. And this is where we'll bring in our scratches. Now, when you take a look at the scratches, you'll notice that there's a, a bunch of different ones you can choose. Since we're working on displacement, you'd assume it would be a good idea to bring in the displacement one. Um, but I actually tried this and it, it, it actually didn't work particularly well. So <laughs> I'm going to use this overlay one because um, that worked just fine. In fact, I'll use the white on the black scratches on a white background. Because in a bump map, the darker areas cut into a surface and the brighter areas bump out. And obviously with scratches we want them to cut in so we'll use that map there like so and there we go now what we want to do is change this again to multiply because we want to take the dark areas from this map and overlay them on top of our original displacement map we don't want the bright areas so I'm just going to change that to mu no, multiply and now it's, it's kind of difficult to see but you can see our, our scratches starting to to affect the roughness map what we do need to do is go into that texture though and change that to linear like we did before okay so with that done um i think if we hit render we should see probably quite a horrid result but we, we should see some effects so let's give that a go okay so uh yeah we can <laughs> We can see like one scratch there, which wasn't quite the effect I was after. Um, we're going to need to uh, massively adjust the, the tiling. Um, so let's click on our texture there. In fact, what we're going to need to do is insert the advanced bitmap in front of that texture. Right, so that, that just gives us way more control over what we're doing. And now we can tile this to our, to our heart's content. Just change that to linear again. Um, so let's try a value of 5 for the tiling, I think that will be good. And in terms of strength, it's, re it's really hard to judge with, uh, when you can't really see it properly. So I'll run another render and then if we need to adjust strength we'll do that then. 
and we're still not seeing much of a uh, much of an effect there and I've realized why I did leave out quite an important step <laughs> when we go to this uh, basic tab here we need to click this use as subdivision surface that will, that will create more geometry for our scratches to work with um, which is why we're not really seeing much of an effect at the moment. So after clicking that, let's uh, let's once again hit render, and this should be a uh, this should be more of the result we were after. Okay, so that is more like it. Lots and lots and lots of scratches, um, and the the scaling's pretty good. Now all we need to do is is, is tone down the strength. So I'm going to quickly do that by going back into our little layer of uh, of displacement here name that actually there we go um, and this this opacity level will basically control the strength of our scratches and I'm going to set that to about a 0.075 so a really low amount um, but that that's that's all we're going to need uh, maybe maybe point one. I don't know we'll see in a sec <laughs> um, and now for a final render I'm just going to up the size a little bit so we can get a good look at this um, I'll do it 1280 by 720 and I'm just going to up the rendering quality a tad and yeah we'll give it a final render and take a proper look at this okay so now we have our finished render and it's uh, yeah it's looking pretty good I'd probably still tone down the scratches just a little bit further probably the smudges too um, but for the purposes of a tutorial I would say that works well in summary, we've taken our original wooden floor material and added some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel.